This is a follow-up to my binomial theorem derivation video, but it, it should stand on its own. Um, we've got uh, the binomial theorem, which s tells you how to expand out x plus y to the n, tells you that the coefficients that you get of x to the n, y to the 0, x to the n minus 1, y to the 1, etc., are choose coefficients. Um, they're often called binomial coefficients, but you can also think of them as ways to choose. And in that other video, we saw you could also think of them as ways to count anagrams of extraordinarily simple and unpronounceable words, words only involving the letters x and y. Now, um, the pattern of the coefficients for x plus y to the 0, plus y to the, x plus y to the 1, x plus y squared, etc., form a famous pattern called Pascal's triangle, which if you're at this level, you've probably seen, and you probably know that there's a cool, simple recursive rule for how to generate, for example, um, this 4 from the row above it, or this 6, or the 10. But I want to show um, wh how that comes from uh, the, the analysis in the other video of that this is a ways to count uh, words and sort of anagrams of words. Okay, so the 4, for example, that's the coefficient of x cubed y to the 1 and x plus y to the 4th. Um, where does that uh, come from for, f in terms of our understanding? Okay, so 4, it's 4c1, but what it really was, this n means count the number of things in a set. It's really just the number of things in this set, the ways I can anagram xxxy. And one cool way to do that is just figure out where the y goes. There's just four slots the y can go in and just fill in the rest of the rest with x's. Okay, so that's um, that 4. Okay, now uh, I want to show you how that comes from the row above. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to group that into, um, into I'm just going to reshuffle it. I'm just going to group, actually I don't even have to reshuffle it. I'm just going to group it into two things. There's a set where it starts with x's. We start the, with the first letters in x. Okay, alrighty. And I'll just put a little dot, dot, dot. Eh, maybe I shouldn't put a dot, dot, dot. Maybe I'll put a big, big old dash. No, that doesn't work very well. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, I'm just going to separate it out into two sets. There's the ones that starts with x's, and there's a, and then there's the one, the, the only one that starts with a y. Okay. So now I just want to see, okay, these are all known to start with x. So if I want to describe, for example, the x, y, x, x, I don't need to tell you. If I already know it's in the, the group that starts with x's, I don't need to tell you it starts with an x. I just need to describe the, the last three letters. That's yxx. Okay, so I'm going to just maybe make an extra little space here. These were all created out of three-letter words by adding an x in front. And what are the three letters? It's all possible three-letter words with one y. Because remember, the things we were trying to get are four-letter words with exactly one y. Well, one way to create that is take a three-letter word with one y and then put an x in front of it. That gives you four letters, which is what I want. It does not screw up the number of y's. And so there's three of these guys because the count, this three was exactly the count of how many words you have that are three letters long with one y. And so we're getting that, but that's not the only contribution. There's another contribution, which is I could have created something with four letters total and one y by, let me put a little space here, Taking, um, let me just, I just want to make these spaces, actually. I don't want to imply I'm subtracting anything. What I'm really, a, a little more fancy way to say this is I'm taking the union of two sets, but I don't need that fancy terminology. Okay, so the other way to get a, a word with one y and three x's is just start out with something with no y's. Now, that's very special. There's only one. That's exactly this one. That counted how many words there are with just three x's. That's the x cubed uh, coefficient in x plus y cubed, um, and then add a y to make exactly the kind of thing. And that's the only thing I can do. The first letter is either an x or a y. If it's an x, it can be thought of as just a modification of a three-letter word with two x's and one y. That's the three. Or this, or it's um, the first letter is a y, in which case it came from a word with three um, with three x's and no y's. So in other words, it's the one plus three. I'll put it in equals. It's the 1 plus, oh, this, let me say 3 plus 1, or I could delete the equals for no reason. It's just 3 plus 1. It's this number plus this number, and those are the two above and to the left and above and to the right. Okay, let's do, let's do some more examples. What if I look at uh, 4C2, the 6 in that same row, okay? That's the number of ways to write down words with two x's and two y's, okay? 
and I'm just going to, that, so I just wrote all those down. You can pause and check that that really is the six words with, with that, um, with two X's and two Y's. And now I'm going to separate it out. So now I'm going to have to switch these guys. Oh, no, actually, no, they're still written in the right way. Oh, yeah, they're always going to be written the right way because I write them in alphabetical order. Okay, this, I'm just going to indicate that there's a spacing here. So that's X. These are the three with X in front. And these are the three with Y in front. Where did they come from? This is take any letter, any word with one X and two Y's and put an X in front. Ooh, how it counts one X and two Y's? It's this one. That was um, all the, that's the coefficient in front of X, Y squared. That's just the count of how many letters have X, Y squared. And then I put an X in front. So that gives me part of uh, the total I want. Or I could take a word with two X's and one Y and put a Y in front. Remember, I need to get stuff with two X's and two Y's exactly. So if I know I'm going to be putting a Y in front of that, it's got to be a, a word, a slightly shorter word, with two X's and one Y. Okay. Well, that is exactly this three. That was the count. That's the coefficient of X squared Y. And so that's that three. So the, And what's the total? You're just getting the union of those two sets, or in other words, just the whole list, not just the X starters and the Y starters, but everything. So it's going to be three plus three. And that is the six that we're seeing. Okay, one more. And this one, I won't uh, assume that I know the answer uh, ahead of time. And I'll show something that's really cool. Um, doing this, all these videos on the computer, I noticed that sometimes just looking at how computers work and like how you can copy and paste and be lazy actually tells you a lot about patterns. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste. Okay, I need five letter words um, with two Y's. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to um, start out. By taking these guys, let's see, this was with, oh no, I want to I want to take this one first. Okay, I'm going to take this set of four-letter words with two Ys. Okay, what what can I do to make that, to make a, a five-letter word that still has two Ys? I'm just going to put an X in front of everything. So this is kind of a cool way to see what's going on. The the good way to do this without with less typing is I'm actually using this 4C1 list, and then all I did was I put the Xs in front. Okay, now I'll leave a, uh, leave a space here. Okay, and now how else can I write a word with uh, five total letters and two Ys? I'm going to take ones that already have two Ys. I'm going to copy and paste. And then I'm going to put a Y in front. So just by being lazy and using copy and paste, I'm led to exactly... <sighs> That's not what I wanted to do. Just kidding. Um, I used the same one twice. You probably saw that coming, didn't you? But it's okay to make a few mistakes because that's how you that's how you do things. You make mistakes and then you fix them. Okay, so I really wanted the ones with one Y. I'm going to put a Y in front of these guys. I'm going to get the ones that start with Y. I need to have ones that only had one Y. Okay. So anyway, if you're not talking and doing it at the same time, and if you actually have a brain, then what you get is I created this master list by just taking this one, copying, pasting, and modifying them by putting an X in front to have five letters and two Ys. And then I took this one, once I figured out my mistake, um, and um, I took this list, copied and pasted, and put Ys in front. That's the only other way to get five letters total with two Ys. And so what are we getting? We're getting six plus four, or let me call it four plus six. Okay. And that's exactly four C. Uh, weird spacing again. Okay. And I'm just going to leave it. 4C1 uh, plus... Yeah, it thinks it wants to um, put a subscript on the plus sign. I know they, they end up kind of weird when we do this with scientific work. Plus 4C2. Okay. So that's exactly the 10 equals this 10 is created out of the 4 and the 6. So this is one way why how this counting procedure can also be used to show... Um, this fundamental rule of Pascal that any entry is the sum of the entries above and to the left and above and to the right. It's just based on this counting of words and um, partitioning, splitting it up into, into two pieces, based on whether the first letter is an X or the first letter is a Y. Often you'll see this proved with sort of fancy things with factorials and, and identities with factorials, and I think this is a better way.